Hello, everyone. Welcome to our channel, Making Life Easy. Making Life Easy channel. We are happy to have you with us. We are looking at basic mechanics. And then in this session, we want to look at the resultant of two concurrent forces. Kindly subscribe to our channel so that whenever we put another video, you can easily find it. And also like the channel and then share your comments with us so that we can be able to improve our channel for you. Once again, today we are looking at resultant two concurrent forces. And then we are going to solve problems relating to this area. So let us quickly start with our problems. So let's start with question one. Example one, two forces, F1 and F2 act on a pole at point A, as shown in the diagram below. Determine the resultant of the two forces. Let's look at how we are going to solve this kind of problem. Looking at the diagram there. So first of all, we are going to draw our free body diagram for the problem. And then, as you know, when you are giving two forces acting on an object, you can either use the laws of parallelogram and the triangle rule, or you can use the method of resolving forces into components. So for this problem, we are going to use the parallelogram law and also the triangle rule. So let's start. Solution. So first of all, we said that we are going to use the triangle and the law of parallelogram. So first of all, let's complete our force diagram there to form a parallelogram. So our parallelogram is going to look like this. We have our parallelogram is going to look like this. We have our Y axis like that. And then we have our X axis. We have our X axis. And then our forces were given like that. We have one force here. And then we have another force at this side. We have another force at this side. Good. So we complete that to form a parallelogram. So we are told that from this to that is 20 degrees. So from this to that is 20 degrees. Then from this to that, we are told that it is 15 degrees, 15 degrees. So we complete, this is our F1 and this is F1. F1 and this side is F2 our F2. So we complete that diagram to form a parallelogram. We complete it to form a parallelogram. Good. So from this question, let's take it that the angle here is X. The angle here is X. We know from parallelogram that opposite angles are equal. So this side will also be X. So this side, this angle here will also be equal to this angle here. So let's call this one A and this one also A. This one also A. And then we know that the opposite side of a parallelogram is equal. So if this is F1, then this side will also be F1. And then if this is F2, this side will also be F2 also be F2. So having been able to do this, let us now determine our angle X and our angles A and A. So we can say that 
from this diagram, we can see that 2x plus 2a, the sum of angles in a parallelogram is equal to 360. But now we can, let's first of all find our x. We know that this is making an angle of 90. This is making an angle of 90. So we can see that x plus 20 plus 15, which is the angle down here, is equal to 15, which is the angle down there, is equal to 90. So from there, our x will be equal to 65 degrees. So having been able to get x, now we can be able to get our e. So we can say that 2 times 65 plus 2 times our a will be equal to 360 degrees. So from here, we can say that our 2a will be equal to 360 minus minus 2 times 65, which will give us 130, 130. So from here, we can say that our A, if you simplify, our A will be equal to 115 degrees. So we have been able to find our angle S here. We have been able to find our angle A here. But from the question, we were told to find the resultant force. So it means that we can draw the diagonal of our diagram to get the resultant force. So our diagonal will be like this from this point up to this point. And this will be our resultant, which is R. So having been able to determine this, now we have two equal triangles. So we can just take one of them. So we are going to pick this side and then use it to solve our problem. So now let's pick that triangle and draw the free body diagram for that side alone. So for that side, we can have our diagram like this. We can have our diagram like this. These are x axis. And then we know that our first force is like that, which is F2. Sorry for that. Let me erase and try to draw it well. So our first diagram, we know that our first one is something like that, which is our F2. And then our F1 comes this way to join our F2 in that manner. So now this is moving this direction. We said that we are going to draw the forces in the head two manner. So where this is ending, that will be the beginning of the other one and even from a parallelogram. So now we can join this end to that end, and that will be our resultant. So our resultant is going to, our resultant is going to be like that, and it will face the opposite direction of our two forces. It will face the opposite direction of our two forces. Don't forget that our angle here was given in the question as 15 degrees, as 15 degrees. And then we have calculated our E, this angle, and then that it is giving us, it is giving us 115 degrees, 115 degrees. And then we know our F2 from the question, F2 from the question is 150 newtons, and then our F1 from the question was 200 newtons. Good. So this is our resultant, which is R. Don't forget that our resultant force is a vector point. So our resultant should have both magnitude and direction. So the magnitude will be this line, but the angle will be from this x axis, from this point up to that point. So let's call it theta. Our angle will be theta. So now, first of all, let's determine the resultant of our two forces. From the cosine rule, we know that if you want to determine our resultant, the square of our resultant will be equal to the square of this side plus the square of that side minus the product of this side and this side, cos of the angle between them from our cosine rule. So from our cosine rule, from our cosine rule, 
you can see that R square will be equal to F1 square plus F2 square minus two times F1 times F2 and then cost of the angle between them, which is in this case, our angle there, the angle facing the side which we want to calculate. So in this case, it will be our 115, our 115. So it means that our R will be equal to the square root of, we know F1 from the question to be 200, so 200 square plus 150 square plus minus, minus, sorry, what is there supposed to be minus because we are within the triangle, minus two times F1, which is 200, times our F2, which is 150, cost of the angle between them, which is 115, cost of the angle between the other two sides or the angle facing our resultant, which in this case is 115. So from here, our R will be equal to, when you do the calculation, if you calculate our R will be equal to 341.9 Newtons. And that is very simple. But the R we have there is just the magnitude of our force. Don't forget that we have stated that force is a vector quantity. So it has both magnitude and direction. So our R is the, just the magnitude. We are now about to find our angle, which we represented there as theta. But don't forget that our theta will be from this point to this point. But we know the angle from this point up to this force here. We don't know the angle from this line up to this line. So let's represent that with phi. So now we can say that our phi, our theta, which is our angle we are looking for, will be equal to 15, which is the angle down here, which was given in the question as 15 plus our phi. So first of all, we have to find our phi. And we can be able to determine our phi from using the sine rule. Using the sine rule, we can be able to get this phi. So the sine rule say that this, this side over the sine of this angle is equal to this side over the sine of that angle. And when you also, the inverse is also true. So we can say that sine phi over the opposite side, sine of this angle over the opposite side, the opposite side here is 200. Sine phi over 200 will be equal to what you have calculated. We know our resultant and we know this angle, so we can use that. So we can say that sine 115 over the sine of the opposite, over the magnitude of the opposite side, which in this case is our R which is 341.9. And then from there, we can get our file. Our file will be equal to sine inverse for our file. Let me do it step by step so that some of us can be able to follow. So from here, our file, our file will be equal to sine file will be equal to sine 115 over 341.9 times 200. And from here, we can quickly get our file. So we can see that theta will be equal to the sine inverse of whatever is there, which is sine 115 over 341.9 times our 200. And then from there, if you do that computation, our theta, our file, this one is not theta, this is file. We are still looking for file. So our file will be equal to, our file will be equal to 32.0 degrees. But don't forget that we have already stated that theta will be equal to 15 plus file. So our theta will be equal to 15 plus 32 degrees. And then our theta will be equal to 47 degrees. 
So now our resultant force, which we said that it is magnitude and direction. So our resultant force will have a magnitude of R will be 341.9 Newtons, and it is making an angle of 47 degrees with a positive X axis. And we, have, we are done with that question. That is pretty simple, isn't it? Good. So now let's move on to our second question. Our second question. Good. Let's move on to our second question. So let me quickly erase whatever is inside there. And then we try to solve our second question. The first question was pretty very easy. So now we want to solve our second question. And what is the second question saying? Our second question is in that two small cars, A and B, two small cars, A and B, are used to lift a C out of the ditch, as shown in the diagram below. If the forces applied by A and B are 50 newtons and 105 newtons, respectively, determine the resultant of the two forces. Determine the resultant of the two forces. So we have two forces. CB and another one is CA. And they are all acting at, from the point C. So we are asked to find the resultant of the two forces. Don't forget that you have already stated the fact that resultant of two forces in the two dimensions can be done using the triangle rule and the laws of parallelogram. Or you can also use the method of summing components. So in this case, if you see the question, we have been given the distances on the x axis and the y axis for both the two forces. So now we the best method to use here and the easiest method is by using the method of summing up components. So let's quickly look at how to solve such kind of problems. Solution. Example two. So with this question, as you can see, we were given the X and the Y component of the force, but we don't know the hypotenuse. So for us to be, to be able to solve that using the method of summing components, using the method of summing components, then we have to first find the, the magnitude of the distance from C to B, and also the magnitude of the distance from C to A. So let's start with the, for the car B, for the car B. So for, sorry. Let's go back to our second question. So we have already stated that we need to find the we need to find the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse for B and then the length of the hypotenuse for car A. So for, for car B, for car B, we want to get the hypotenuse. We already know the distance in the X axis, the distance in the Y axis, so we can easily find the hypotenuse. So we can say that our CB, which is the hypotenuse, will be equal to the square root of the distance in the X axis, which we are given as 10 square plus the distance on the y axis, which is 25 squared. 
and from there we can get our hypotenuse, the distance from C to B to be equal to 26.9 meters. Then we can also do the same for the hypotenuse for car A. So for car A, for car A, we can see that the distance for the hypotenuse or the length of the hypotenuse will be equal to C A. And then we are saying that it will be the square root of the distance in the x axis, which in this case we are given as four square plus our distance in the y axis, which is 17 squared which is 17 squared. So from there, we can say that our CA will be equal to 19.2 meters. So, but from the method of summing components, the method of summing components, we know that if we have the hypotenuse and then we have the distance on the X axis and the distance on the Y axis, then we can say that our, our force, the S component of the force, which for car B, for car B, our S component of the force is going to be BX, BX. So our S component of the force is going to be the magnitude of the force in B, force. So let's take it that from our, from our diagram, from our diagram, we are told we have a diagram like that. We have a diagram like this. And then we have our axis going this way. And this one going this way. And we are told that this one is point D, this is point C. And then we have one going this way. And then this one is point A. So from this diagram, we are told that the distance on the x is 10 and the distance on the y is given as 25. And from the a, we are told that the distance on the x, the distance on the x is 12 and the distance on the y is 17, all in meters, all in meters. So if we have an angle here, let's take it that this angle is theta. And if you want to get the S component of the force, if you want to get the S component of the force and the Y component of the force, then as we have already stated, you do that with reference to the angle here. You do that with reference to the angle here. So you can see that if you want to get the Y component of the force, the Y component of the force is facing our angle theta. So it means that now, in that case, our y component of the force, since it is facing the angle, our y component of the force is going to be by equals d sine of the angle, sine of the angle, which will be sine theta. And then our s component of the force, which will be this side, because this side is adjacent to the angle, is going to be b cos, b cos theta. But in this case, we don't have theta, but we have been given the distances. So we can say that this will be equal to, because we know that cos theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we can represent cos theta with the distance on the adjacent and then our hypotenuse, which we had already calculated to be 26.9. So we can say that our BS will be equal to B, and then we are saying that our cos theta from this diagram will be the adjacent, which is this side, over the hypotenuse. So which will be, so in this case, it is going to be 10 over the hypotenuse, which is 26.9, 26.9. And then we know that our B, the force in that diagram was given as 105. Our force here was given as 105. Our force at point B was 105. So it means that, but now if we are looking for X, you can see that our unit vectors, we have already established that our unit vectors are in this direction. I is positive when it is moving to the right on the X axis and then J is positive. J is positive when we are moving out. So you can see that if you want to determine the S component for B, 
In this case, our direction is moving at the opposite side of our unit vector. It's moving at the opposite side of our unit vector. So it means that in that case, our force in the S component is going to be negative. So whatever we have there is going to be negative 105, which is the magnitude of D times N over 26.5. And then that should give us, that should give us 30, negative 39.6 newtons. And then on our y axis also, if you want to get a force on the y axis, which is dy, we are representing with dy, then we know that y, we are going to move upward. If we want to get to this point of the force, we are going to move this direction on the x and this direction up there. So we are going to say that because our y is moving in the same direction with our unit vector g, our y will be positive. So we are going to get d into bracket. But this is the y. You can see that that side is facing our angle. So we are going to use sine theta as we have already explained. And sine theta there is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, which will give us 25 over 26 point nine. And from there, we can say that our force, our B is giving us, our B is giving us 105. So 105 times 25 over 26.9. And from this, our answer is going to be 97.6 Newtons. And now we come to the A side, so for A, for A, we also resolve A into S component and Y component of the force. So for A, we are told that the magnitude for the force which is applied at A is equal to 50 Newtons. The force applied at A is 50 Newtons. And then um, if the angle here is five, if the angle here is five, and we can say that if you want to get a horizontal distance, because the horizontal distance is adjacent to the angle, so we can say that our AX will be equal to our A, which is the magnitude of the force given, cos of the angle there, which is pi, because the horizontal side is adjacent to that angle. So, and then we can also say that our AY will be equal to our Y, but is facing the angle. So it's going to be A sine phi, A sine phi. So from here, we can say that our phi, cos phi from this diagram, cos is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we have already determined that the hypotenuse for this side is 19.2. So from here, we can say that our A cos phi will be A, but look at, if we want to get to this point of the force, we are going to move in this direction. X axis, we are going to move this way and then we come down like this. You can see that our movement is in the same direction with our unit vector i. So our X is going to be positive. So we are going to get A into brackets, the adjacent, which is 12 over the hypotenuse, which is 19.2. And from there, we know that our we know that our A is equal to 50. So 50 into bracket 12 over 19.2. And from there, we are seeing that our A will be equal to, our AS will be equal to 44.3 Newtons. 44.3 Newtons. And then we can do the same thing for B. B into bracket. If you want to get sine theta from this diagram, then it is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which we are getting as 17 over 19.2. So from here, we can say that our y component of the force A is going to be 15 to bracket 17 over 19.2. But let's check the direction of our AY. You can see that we said that we are going to move this way this point. So on the Y, we are going to move down. We are going to move down and it is at the opposite direction of our unit vector. 
So our y is going to be negative. Our y is going to be negative. So we are going to get negative 31.3 newtons. Negative 1.3 newtons. And if we have been able to do that, then now what we are left to do is to sum all the x components by getting Rx and then sum all the y components and then we get Ry. So our s component is going to be, our s component here is this and our s component here is that. We are going to get negative 39.6 minus plus, this one is positive, so plus 44.3. And our answer is going to be, sum all the s components, our answer is going to be 4.7 newtons. 4.7 newtons. And then we can do the same for y. So our yy will be equal to the sum of all the y. So here our y is that. And from this side, our y is this. So we are going to get 97.6 minus 31.3. And then our ry, when you do that computation, is going to give us 66.3 newtons. So from here, you draw a nice diagram to represent Rx and Ry. So you can see that all that you have there is positive. They are all positive. So it will follow the direction of our unit vectors. So S is positive. So we are going to draw our S in this direction. And then our Y is also positive. So we are going to go in the direction of our unit vectors like that. So this is 4.7 and this is 66.3. And then our resultant to be like this, R. So from here, we can complete it to form a rectangle. And then because this angle is 90 degrees, you can use our Pythagoras theorem and say that so if this is 66.3, then this side will also be 66.3. So we can use our Pythagoras theorem and say that our R will be equal to square root of 66.3 square plus. 4.7 square. And from here, we can see that our R, which is the result and the magnitude of the result and is going to be 66.5 Newtons. But we have already stated that a force is a vector quantity. So if you have magnitude and direction, the angle here will be theta, which is to give us our direction. And then we can see that if you want to get our theta, we can use the opposite over our addition. If you can see that tan theta will be equal to Ry over Rx. And then we can say that our theta will be equal to tan inverse. We know our Ry, which is 66.3. And then we know our Rx, which is 4.7. So when you do that computation, our theta will be equal to 85.9 newtons. So from here, we can say that our resultant force will be equal to, R will be equal to 66.5 newtons. And the angle is, sorry, the angle is not in newtons, the angle is in degrees. So our angle will be 85.9 degrees. Good. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you for subscribing and liking our page. If you have any question or anything, let us know at the comment section. We also do, we also saw three examples again on resultant of two forces in our next video. Kindly watch out for it and then you upload on our channel as well. Thank you very much for your time. See you in our next video. Thank you.